Catharism was a Christian heretical movement that arose in the 12th century and ended more or less in the 14th century. Its adherents were called the Cathars, and this is ultimately derived from the Greek word referring to pure. They were heretical in the eyes of the Catholic Church because they didn't adhere to the same tenets, they didn't have the same beliefs. In particular, they were very Gnostic, specifically they were dualist. They believed in the dual nature of God, among other things. And we don't need to go into the details because it's only somewhat germane to the video. However, they were heretics, but eventually they were stamped out of existence and they ceased to be. But Catharism did leave its mark upon the European landscape. And I'm talking about the Cathars specifically because they were outsiders in their time. When in Europe between the 12th and 14th century, most people were Catholic and you ran headlong against the authority of the Catholic Church, well, you were an outsider. So I wonder at times how they referred to themselves. Did they see themselves as fundamentally different? Probably. I bring this up because we have been using this word for quite some time, this word normie, and not we, but people online, to discuss a very broad band of people, people who we regard as different, and they in turn regard us as different, we who sometimes bandy about this term. But what does it really mean? Were the Catholics of the Catholic Church at the time the normies of the Middle Ages and the Cathars were the ones who were not the normies? That's why I brought that up, of course. What exactly is a normie? Now, it's not entirely clear when this word emerged. It probably emerged somewhere around 2015 or 16. That's when you first notice this word truly coming to existence and being used quite frequently. But the question is, what actually is a normie? You could use the so-called dictionary definition, which is basically somebody who uses popular social media and conforms to normative opinions and standards. And that certainly has validity. But I think it's a little bit more complex than that because the online society that people have unwittingly forged for themselves has made the term more complex than it ever has been. Because really at the end of the day, apart from someone who adheres or conforms to standard opinions and standard media, there's something more to it. The term normie is simply a descriptor of somebody who belongs to the outgroup. Effectively speaking, we're talking about in and out groups here. Normies are the people in the out group, and the non-normies are the people in your in group. Because one person's normie is another person's non-normie. It's not as if there's a consensus of the non-normies. Because non-normiedom is broken down into further categories based on personal beliefs, political and or religious commitment, cultural beliefs, and a host of other things. So, for example, I posed the question recently to a friend whether or not people who don't game are normies. Well, that's a really difficult one to tease out. Right now, even as I speak, E3 is going on. Okay, what if you don't know what E3 is? Are you then a normie? And would gamers across the world even use that term? Well, it's a bit of an edge case, right? Because plenty of people who are cultural, political normies would still game and would still know exactly what E3 is. So it is all about the details, as always, the devils in the details. No, normally when we talk about normies and normiedom, we're talking about people who conform to beliefs that are projected onto the mainstream that are not questioned, but again, it does break down even further. Let's say you were an adherent of destiny, far left progressivism. You would use the term normie too, but it wouldn't be to describe what somebody in far right circles or in manosphering circles would describe as normie. It would be somebody who holds beliefs that are mainstream, but not necessarily in concert with your own. And that's exactly what normie means in the modern context. There are all sorts of things that are normie to one person, but not normie to another. And 
I think that this is really what this term has been about. It's, like many things, a lexical qualifier to designate in-group and out-group and to develop a sense of belonging within the in-group, within these so-called online communities. In Manosphereian and or right-wing circles, you typically use the term normie to describe a person who does not see past the Overton window. And conversely, your own beliefs are typically those beliefs that lie outside of the Overton window. And many of those beliefs are simply not permitted to be discussed on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty details of those things. You know many of the beliefs of the far right, and you certainly know many of the beliefs of the manosphere. And everyone who doesn't hold these specific beliefs are typically normies. Now, I've also seen the term normie used in the context simply of describing general behavioral differences. So for example, I've seen extreme introverts refer to extroverts as normie, and in some sense that is valid because extroversion is more normative than introversion is. But what I find really interesting about the in-group, out-group dynamic of normiedom versus non-normiedom is the very powerful inroads that progressive left-wing thinking has made in recent years, and whether or not that is effectively taking over what one might refer to as normative values or normie values. Again, some issues you simply can't discuss on YouTube, but there's one issue in particular that involves questions of sex and gender that is a very pressing issue for the progressive left, and one wonders at this stage whether or not that view is considered a normie view or an outsider view. And so it goes for a lot of things. Many of the average beliefs of your average person these days would be viewed as non-normie, say, in the context of the Cathars of Europe in, say, the 13th or 12th century, because this was a very different time and human understanding of the world was very different. Because these things, of course, in time shift. Beyond the label itself, I think the real reason why many of us are inclined to make use of the word normie to describe people that don't fit into a particular worldview or circle is because it gives us a sense of comfort. That's the in-group, out-group function right there. But I think ultimately, and this is the reason why I brought up the Cathars in the beginning, outsiders have always existed. But what the internet has done is that it has enabled us to be more creative, and to find ecological niches, if you will, that allow us to both socially participate and develop a sense of cohesion against the backdrop of what are considered normative values or normative people, the kinds of people that you simply can't relate to. And sometimes this is embodied by something referred to as the Agent Smith effect, this idea that if you're talking to somebody in a very normal tone, about normal things, they seem perfectly fine, and the minute you step outside the boundary of the Overton window, Agent Smith himself, as it were, teleports in and assumes the form of this person, and all of a sudden, it's you against the Matrix. A lot of these things coincide with this idea of normie versus non-normie. I think ultimately, the term normie versus non-normie is yet another indication of how divided and split we are on any number of things. Again, one person's normie is another person's non-normie and vice versa. People who hold certain beliefs describe groups outside of those beliefs as normies, whether or not they're normies or not. It's simply a reference to the particular belief set, typically, as well as more broadly normative behavior. But again, you can have somebody on the far left, far right, and anything in between, and many people refer to each other in this context as normie or non-normie. And it will be interesting to observe as time goes by how this term evolves and further shifts and changes, particularly with the development of left-wing progressive politics in the mainstream. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. As always, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video. Much appreciated. Hit the bell icon to be informed of the forthcoming videos. If I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. As always, may the gods watch over you. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, 
please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.